Hi everybody, part two now. We looked in part one at what our ideas about cavemen are, and now we're going to turn our attention to the caveman myths themselves and ask ourselves where, where do they come from? Why do we believe uh, what we do about cavemen? And I'm going to argue that there's really two places to look. One is in the racial science and evolutionary theory of the mid-19th century. As some of you know, Charles Darwin wrote Origin of the Species in 1859. It was published, and that talks about how uh, species evolved. He subsequently, in the 1870s, wrote The Descent of Man and its relation to sex. And in particular, that was looking at the origin of the human species. Uh, but the important point is that he was not the only one exploring evolution. Lots of people were exploring evolution. Darwin's famous because he came up with the explanation for how it happened. But in fact, lots of others were looking at biological evolution as well as the evolution of the Earth itself. The uh, biblical idea that the Earth is about four or 5,000, 6,000 years old was giving way slowly to the uh, historical idea of the Earth, that it's four and a half billion years old. And this had to do with the evolution of the coastlines of England and the geographies of other areas, the geologies of other areas, I should say, uh, the development of rocks and so forth. So evolution was hot stuff. And part and parcel of that was the development of ideas of racial science. Uh, two important points here. One is the idea of the extant primitive, looking at contemporary or modern hunter-gatherers and using them uh, to, to uh, understand caveman, understand prehistoric peoples. The idea was, well, if Darwin's right and we trace ourselves back to the apes or ape-like creatures, then clearly the whites are the most advanced and evolved people, the blacks are the least advanced and evolved people, and the red and the yellow peoples are somewhere in between. So I would argue that the idea that cavemen are, are brutish, uh, uh, pulling their women around by their hair, is connected to the same uh, attitudes towards uh, people of African descent in Europe and the United States. Uh, developing in the mid-19th century. And by the way, that's when these discoveries about prehistoric peoples uh, start to emerge. Bones, paintings, that sort of thing. The other point is sort of more relevant to us today and yet uh, uh, less compelling in some ways. And this has to do with the question of are we better or worse off than cavemen? I would argue that we continue to hold the idea that cavemen, prehistoric peoples, were brutish and foolish um, because we want to think that we're better off. And why do we want to think that we're better off? Because the direction the world is heading in has to be a good direction, because if it's not, we need to change it, and that means radical revolution. And this goes back to some ideas that developed in the 1960s, as you all know, a very um, upsetting time for a lot of people, a lot of cultural change. And an anthropologist named Marshall Solins put forward the theory of an affluent society. He argued that prehistoric peoples, hunter-gatherers, were in fact affluent. He described the Zen road to affluence, which uh, states that human material wants are finite and few, technical means unchanging, but on the whole adequate. He noted that hunter-gatherers, modern hunter-gatherers, work only about four hours a day at most. So if they were better off, and we're working a lot harder, what does that tell us about the direction we're now leading the world in? We look at things like economic expansion, uh, the integration, uh, global economic integration through the WTO and so forth, uh, the development of technology and science. Are we not, in fact, going in the wrong direction? And isn't something radical necessary? So in sum, uh, prehistoric peoples I've shown you were far more sophisticated than we allow. Popular ideas about them originate amidst 19th century racial science. Uh, we stick to this ignorant view in part to support the status quo. The question I would ask you to think about looking at this image from uh, the movie Year One uh, and thinking about the Mel Brooks film you've seen is would these movies be funny with black actors today? Okay. The last thing I'd suggest is you take a look at this great clip from uh, Saturday Night Live from the 1970s. It is a lot of fun. Bye-bye.